Hi, everyone. I'm Lana Karen. I'm a managing director and um, investor at Philips Ventures. Uh, we are the corporate venture capital arm of Philips, a health technology company with locations across the world, 80,000 people across the world, and multiple businesses. So I'm going to share with you a very different type of presentation today. Um, so I come from the industry, even though I have spent some time in academia, primarily teaching innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, today, I'm going to share with you some of the challenges that we are grappling with uh, when it comes to innovating um, within, within Philips. How do we leverage data, AI, to solve some of the challenges, but also um, um, how we can collaborate with some of you, some of our customers. So first of all, if you're not familiar with the um, Philips Ventures arm of Philips, I'm going to share with you a few data points just to uh, set the context for you. Um, so again, Philips, Venture, uh, Philips Ventures Group is the venture capital arm of Philips. We invest into emerging companies, um, and we also collaborate with uh, startups across, across the globe. We have about 1.2 billion euros under management, and we have about 300 companies in our portfolio. So that's significant. These companies have um, raised about 8 billion, and that's with a B, um, uh, uh, worth of capital. And we have about 50 ongoing collaborations with some of our portfolio companies, so those companies that we have invested into, but also those companies that we have not taken an equity stake. So what I'm saying here is that if you're looking to engage with an industry, think of Philips first. So when we invest, when we think of um, where do we put our money, we typically um, look at um, our portfolio. So our portfolio spends, uh, spends not only um, personal health and consumer health, but also precision diagnosis, image-guided therapy, and connected care. So again, when we think about um, strategic fit, we are going to, to look at these four buckets um, uh, to ensure that the investments are going to support our businesses. And when we think about the challenges or the problems that we want to solve, we are going to focus on a multitude on uh, problems. We are going to focus on how we can help providers, clinicians to, let's say, um, tackle administrative uh, burden that uh, a lot of the clinicians are facing related to EMRs. And we're also going to uh, focus on patients um, and consumers. So again, uh, the, the healthcare continuum that um, you are uh, familiar with is what is really driving um, Philips innovation uh, strategy and how we can use data AI to really make, um, make these challenges, address these challenges. Um, so the other thing that we are looking at when we're looking to invest at Philips Ventures, we are trying to really um, um, assess the landscape of all of the digital technologies that are proliferating right across uh, the tech landscape. So we've been inv investing into various companies um, that leverage AR, VR, right, uh, miniaturization technology, um, wearables, et cetera, et cetera. But what's really important is um, understanding that these technologies, access to these technologies are driving exponential growth of data. And you guys know this really well. So some of the data points that are really interesting, and I don't think that a lot of folks realize that Philips is managing a ton of data. So you can see some of these uh, huge numbers here on the, um, on the slide, 450 billion medical images, 500 million patients tracked without patient monitors uh, per, uh, per year, 
4.7 billion nights of cloud-based data, sleep data, uh, 52 petabytes of healthcare data in our health suite cloud. So this is massive. So what do we want to do with this data? What are we doing with this data um, today? I can tell you that um, we are primarily trying to figure out how do we turn this data into actionable insights? How do we help clinicians, physicians, consumers um, do something with that data? So I worked on a sleep project um, a few years ago. And um, our main challenge that we were grappling with is not how we're going to measure sleep, because there are a lot of uh, wearables on the market that can get really, really uh, great data and measurements. But what can we do with that data, with those measurements, to actually drive different type of behavior of that patient? How can we help them to, um, let's say, I wake up, I didn't really get a great night of sleep, but I still want to be at my top performance. So what can I do at that moment in time, or what can I do at night to ensure that it doesn't happen again? So it's that kind of personalized, actionable insight is what I want, and this is what I want to pay for. These are the type of things that we are grappling with. How do we drive that type of personalization? How do we turn data into actionable insights? And how do we do it in such a way that people are willing to pay for? So ultimately, we want AI to help us make healthcare more predictive, more precise, more personalized, productive, and proactive. And um, I invite all of you um, to team up with us. So I'm going to share with you a few examples from our Philips Ventures portfolio and also from our Philips, broader, Philips um, product portfolio. So um, one of our large businesses um, is focused on image-guided therapy. So think of cath lab setting. And um, within cath lab setting, we focus on solving both clinical problems and challenges, but also operational challenges. So I'm going to tell you about, um, to uh, share with you a couple of examples that primarily focus on solving operational challenges. So this is an example of a company called Metapixel that we've invested into that helps us uh, leverage AI, computer vision, to essentially automatically seg segment a coronary tree. And that allows us not only uh, to help physicians detect lesions and also uh, segment the, the tree to make the whole process of the PCI procedure a lot easier and um, better, but also it helps us um, capture all of the measurements that are typically done manually in order to speed up and make the process of reporting and documentation easier. So that doc at the end of the procedure doesn't have to actually spend the time on reporting, but can take a break. Or at the end of the day, doesn't really have to worry about filling out the notes, but can go home and spend time with the family. This same challenge is in focus here with another partner that we have, the company called Suki AI. Suki AI has uh, developed NLP, natural language processing technology, that helps us ca capture some of the data points in the cath lab um, in order to, again, speed up the process of documentation and reporting. Historically, again, right now, what happens is physicians are just calling out different data points uh, to the logging nurse. Sometimes they um, actually um, are, those data points are not captured. The logging, it's, it's really loud, right, in the cath lab. So those data points just um, do not get into the report. So what happens then? Well, first of all, the hospital is not able to get reimbursement um, for what uh, it actually performed. And um, two, um, 
it also creates, again, that additional burden on the physician to spend the time at the end of the day or at the end of the week to fill out those notes. Again, these are, these are the two examples of um, the partnerships that we have, of the collaborations that we have with uh, data AI companies and how they are helping us address what's happening in the image-guided therapy um, space. Um, I'm going to show you a couple more. These are focused more on the neurovascular um, space um, and a collaboration with a company called CV8, so a pre-commercial company. They've, they have developed facial recognition technology. So what you see on the left here is essentially a mobile-based app that is able to recognize whether a um, patient is having a stroke or not stroke and whether it's um, a, an LVO, a large vessel occlusion type of stroke or not. And it's typically targeted, right now it's targeted towards the EMS setting, so emergency um, professional type of setting, or it could be also used in the home setting. So let's say I'm home um, with, um, with my kid and he is not really, and I'm having some symptoms. Even he would be able to um, take the mobile app and you know it will take him through um, several simple um, steps to really help uh, figure out what to do next. Um, another example of an image um, automated image analysis company, Nicolab, um, that uses advanced image analysis to help radiologists figure out which patients, which CT scans to prioritize. So it's um, Nicolab sits in the cloud, it goes through uh, different images to help decide, uh, uh, detect whether again, a CT image has a stroke, non-stroke, LVO, non-LVO. And why does this matter? It matters because time is brain when it comes to strokes. So what we want to do here is we want to um, not only optimize and streamline, but we want to accelerate time to treatment because so many patients, by the time they get to the interventional suite uh, with an LVO type of stroke, they're not eligible for that stroke. So what happens then? Well, either they die or they have significant disability. And we know that uh, stroke uh, is the leading cause of disability worldwide, and it is also the second cause of death worldwide. So I'm going to shift gears and uh, show you um, some of the examples now uh, from our uh, Philips Brada portfolio. So this is an example now of a mobile-based um, uh, probe, Lumify, so what you see on the, on the right, and on the left, we have Collaborative Live. So again, mobile-based um, um, app that allows uh, remote care providers to connect with licensed um, ultrasound technicians to, um, to provide care to patients um, uh, in remote areas. Um, it leverages AI, and um, again, it's mobile-based, um, so I thought that it might be of interest to you. Another example is how we are leveraging um, AI to help uh, uh, radiologists um, acquire better images. Um, so this, um, this example, again, you probably can't see the details, but basically, um, it helps improve the quality of the image acquisition. It helps also shorten the time that um, uh, it takes to acquire images. This is another example of how our MRI machines help um, uh, by using this light or breathing gating algorithm to really um, take images when uh, the time is right, when uh, the patient is um, uh, breathing um, or not breathing specifically. Um, there are many other examples that we have across our diagnosis and um, image-guided therapy portfolio, but I wanted to shift gears to 
um, uh, some of the products that we have in our consumer health and more home outside of the hospital setting uh, portfolio. So um, this is an example of a wearable um, that um, can be used uh, either um, um, you know, outside of the ICU or um, in the home setting. So it helps uh, acquire a number of uh, measurements. But again, um, what we are seeing um, with many wearables uh, right now is that there is an oversaturation of wearable devices. And what's really important, it's very difficult to differentiate. It's very difficult to really position yours as the uh, device that everybody is going to pay for. And what we are focused, again, what the challenges that the key challenge here is for us, how do we use AI to really help drive those actionable insights or well, how do we deliver insights to the physician to identify those patients that are at risk? And two, um, uh, I think these are the two last examples that I have. We have um, a mobile-based um, sleep uh, or chronic management type of app that allows um, patients get better at managing their sleep apnea or some COPD. Um, so again, uh, we are looking to add those personalized uh, insights or we call it intelligent coaching. How do we, uh, can we add this intelligent coaching capability or functionality to help make a difference um, in, uh, in an individual's life? And last but not least, we have, I'm a, I'm a fan, I'm a Sonic Air user. We have a fantastic portfolio of um, toothbrushes and they also use um, AI to help um, adults, uh, but also kids get better brushing habits. Um, so with that, I'm gonna transition into a summary and just a few key uh, takeaways and I'll, and I'll take uh, questions. So when we design AI-enabled solutions, what we are focus, focusing on is one, how we can help us augment the expertise of the healthcare providers, how we can improve operational efficiencies, and last but not least, how can we empower all of us um, to develop uh, and stick to better habits to improve our health? Um, as I mentioned at the very, very beginning, we can't do all of this ourselves. We are uh, closely working with many of our uh, customers. Uh, we call these uh, long-term strategic partnerships uh, where we um, trial these kind of solutions, where we team up on data type of projects. Um, so I invite you to reach out to me and um, the rest of the team at Philips to explore how we can team up. Last but not least, the future of healthcare is definitely personalized, uh, definitely connected and integrated. So uh, looking forward to teaming up with all of you to uh, make this happen. Thank you. There were no graphs, unfortunately. Um, our sweet spot is um, somewhere between Series A and Series B. Sometimes we go earlier and invest in seed companies and later Series C uh, companies. Um, we are first and foremost a uh, strategic investor. So again, the uh, mission 
and the strategy of the companies that we invest into has to align with our portfolio. So that's a first and foremost. So we might take a discount on uh, valuation. We might be less um, focused on what you have at this point in terms of traction. Um, so again, Philips uh, is a strategic investor. Um, so for us, uh, alignment, um, strategic alignment and first is first and foremost. And what we also looking for is the uh, fit between the teams, right? Sometimes if we have a project in mind, but um, we know that it's going to be really difficult to execute because of the um, lack of fit between the teams, we may uh, pass on the opportunity. There are many ways. How much time do we have? Um, so would love to explore this um, at the reception, but a venture route is one of the paths that we, we can certainly pursue. Um, a data path is another path. Um, so if you have access to an interesting data set, um, then you know one of the challenges that we face uh, within the industry is getting access to data sets um, that we um, th that we find valuable. So, um, you know, we need data sets to validate our algorithms. We need uh, data to to ensure that we can train our algorithms. And then we also, um, you know, grapple with this other challenge. And uh, this goes out to um, any of you who are from the government or regulatory, we are also grappling with a challenge on how do we accelerate commercialization of AI? It takes a very long time, months, you know, if not years, to bring an algorithm. You know how many algorithm, algorithms, I think only like 30 that are have been approved, so this is another way for us to team up and uh, and collaborate. Again, when you thinking when you think about industry, when you think about industry partners, our focus is not only on uh, developing products and solutions, but also our goal is how can we commercialize it and bring it to market to start making a difference. And the sooner we bring it to market. Right. The sooner we figure out how to uh, tackle all of those hurdles that are on the way, um, then uh, uh, then it's I think going to be better for all of us. So plenty of opportunities, not just with academia, but many organizations, um, associations like American Heart Association or. Um, uh, you know, regulatory bodies, FDA, um, in order for us to really, um, uh, you know, solve some of these challenges that we are facing. Great question. Excuse me, one more quick question from the back. We can continue this discussion later. So thank you again. Thanks, everyone.